Alright guys, welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. So today what we're going to be working on is the custom furnace. This is going to be broken up into three parts. Uh, one for uh, the GUI layout and the, um, the blocks. And then what we're going to be covering um, is the procedures for the blocks. And then finally the procedures for the actual uh, UI. So there's going to be like three parts. A lot of them are interlinked. They're all going to be released at the same time. I will link to the different parts using cards um, in the, the videos as well as the end screen so you guys can carry on to the next part easily. So with that being said, there are new custom assets that I have created from scratch. You're welcome to use them in your own mod, change them or keep them the same however you like. Um, there is a lot of mechanics that go behind this. This supports both vanilla and modded recipes that use the uh, smelting properties from the furnace. And I think it even supports blast furnaces as well. So anything with a smelting recipe, it should work with uh, the custom crafting station. So, And there's no requirement for recipes. It's all taken care of through the result of the smelting process. So this is the GUI. Um, it's not exactly refined perfectly for indicating how everything works. You might want to draw like lock the um, or replace the GUI with like some icons for like fuel or some sort of indicator with uh, what it is for just to make it a little bit more easier to understand. But this is your output slot, your input slot, and then you have your other fuel slot down here. Uh, the fuel is considered uh, using or tested for using tags so we can put planks in or I have it set up for coal as well. Coal takes longer but for this sake of the tutorial what I'm going to do is just basically go ahead and plop a vanilla item in. There's no recipe for it. Uh, it's just built based on the smelting result. One of the things that happens is it kicks you out of the GUI. This can be fixed using block states. Uh, Nuri has a block state plugin that you can actually use to make that work. As you can see here, we have the fuel going down and then we also had a smelting thing. We can do that one more time. It will kick you out every time it changes the state, but um, this can be fixed again through block states. So we can see the process of the fuel going down and the smelting going up based on the percentage. So once this is goes in, a smelting item of that particular type gets crafted, put it into the slot, and when the fuel runs out, it basically turns off. So that's basically that part. Um, you might have noticed again that there is some smoke particles. This was all calculated using math um, to basically get the particles in the exact spot of the pipe there. Um, I'll go into a little bit of detail how I was able to calculate all that, but it works for each direction. If we were to grab these and go over onto this side, we can actually see that it's on that part where the pipe is, and it does it for each direction as well. So other things is the lights light up for that particular part. So that's also a custom feature and uh, just a general model and stuff. All right, so let's go into M Creator and we'll cover the assets, how I've set those up, the tags, and then we'll go into the block and the GUI quickly. All right, so when you're in the actual workspace itself, you're, you have your general folder. This is under the mod elements, which you can see on the left-hand side, there's these tabs down here. Uh, we're going to go to the resource tab and we're going to basically look at the um, textures. These are block textures. I have one for the off block and then one for the on block. And I also have textures for each stage of the progress bar. There is um, 10, pardon me, 11 uh, different icons in total. 1% uh, to, or 0% to 100%. Uh, 10 percent which is or 100 percent pardon me so there's one bar for each percent that there is and same with the smelting process which uses a different rotation and icon but basically just the same thing we also have the furnace thing which is automatically generated through the GUI you can actually export this and uh, basically just um, edit it and put it back in and basically import it as an image uh, rather than a generated image. That's basically that part. And then we have our model, which we can go ahead and quickly take a look. 
So we have our off state, which is going to be the default state. And then what I've created an instance, you can call it whatever you want and then put it on here. I suggest keeping it something relevant to what you know this block is gonna have. So in this case, what I've done is we've just created a state called on and I've set the on texture for this one and the off texture for the default one, which is actually the off block. So once you've done that, save your model. Uh, you can import the model by using the JSON file. Uh, all this is provided in the example workspace, which I will link in the description of this series so you can get it from each video. And uh, basically all the procedures are in the, um, the procedures folder. There's the models for the block bench and the actual JSON file for the model. Uh, there's the textures, which I have for the block, as well as the the uh, GUI icons. And there's also the workspace for the project that I'm working on right now. Again, this will be in the custom furnace uh, GitHub repository for all my examples under the discussions tab. I will link to this, all the files in the description, and then you can basically just export and extract the files from the zip. So keep that in mind. So when you import the JSON file, what you want to do is just import the JSON one right here and then it will pop up here, but I've already done that. So I'm not going to do it again. All right, moving on to our blocks. Um, actually, we should probably move on to tags first because tags uh, will be kind of important later on when we get to the procedures and stuff. So there's three tags in total. Um, you're going to need a tag for each fuel type of item that you want. Now fuel is basically divided into categories for basically smelting. So coal all obviously has a unique smelting time for how long that fuel lasts for, where planks are like 300 ticks or something like that. And then there, there's the 1,600 1, I think for the coal. So you can change how add or remove certain fuels at your own leisure. I've just categorized them into tags so it was easier to categorize certain parts. And both of these tags here for the fuel coal and fuel planks are in the fuel tag, which is basically using importing those tags as separate things. So if we click on this and hover over, we can see this is the fuel coal and fuel planks. You can add tags by clicking the tag icon after you've created the tag and selecting the tag from your mod um, itself. The other tag in here is automatically generated when you create the blocks, so you don't really need to worry about this part too much. Um, these are just the on and off block. It's probably going to be obsolete um, in the future anyways because Minecraft's changed this whole system for the tag system. It's something not many people in the Minecraft community are happy with, but it's just the way that it is. Um, Imcrater is going to try making best of what there is, but no one's really come up with a dedicated way to fix this issue that Mojang has presented us. So with that being said, that might not even be relative uh, to this tutorial in the future, just keep that in mind. All right, so moving on to blocks. So the blocks folder has all the procedures for the blocks themselves. And we also got the two blocks at the top here. So we have the off state for the block and we have the on state. Again, this might be a little bit different if you're using Nerdy's uh, block state plugin. I'm not sure how to use that. So um, if you're working on importing it, it might be a little bit different to set it up. You might just need one block. I'm not sure. But uh, with this, uh, we have two blocks. So one for the off state, one for the on state. We've set our model for the off state which is the default version. You can actually see when you hover over the item or look at the item, it says texture and then a mapping and then it says default and the other one says mapping on. So basically this is our on model and this is our default model. It's in the very small text underneath the actual model name. So you'll have to keep a close eye of what it actually says. It's a little bit hard to see, but it just is. So we have the default model and I've set the rotation for X, Y, or pardon me, uh, North, East, South, and West. And if you want to add water logging, then you want to enable this block and this checkbox down here, 
which allows it to be submerged on water and hide the uh, fluid texture. And the other one basically allows you to make it water loggable. You also want to set the transparency type for the texture to cut out because it is a custom model. So make sure you do that. And then you can set your off texture for the particle which is used at the bottom here. After that, you can just move on to the bounding box, hit generate, and this will automatically generate the model um, properties for the dimensions and everything automatically. Uh, there's no complex model generation for rotation or anything like that. So it's all pro properly aligned when you actually do it this way through with the custom model I made. All right, so moving on to properties. I have it set up for hardness five and resistance six. I've also set the material type to rock and put it under functional blocks, though you can put it under your own mod namespace, uh, creative tab or whatever you want. Um, there's also, both names are called furnace, uh, just to keep it simple. And you might want to add luminescence uh, to the uh, furnace that's on. I'll leave that up to you if you want to do that or not. But uh, I have both of them just disabled for any light value that is generated. Though regular furnaces do give off a little bit of light. Custom drop uh, is set for the off version to drop itself. Only one of it. And it's the same creative pick item. I've enabled the tool to be required for breaking this particular furnace and the tool required is a pickaxe and it can be a wooden pickaxe or higher when it's set to zero. So same as a regular furnace. Lastly, I have set the sound properties to stone just to make it a little bit more like furnaces itself. Moving on to advanced properties, we have set the tick rate to one for this particular furnace. And we've set the map color and we've also made the reaction to being pushed to block. AI pathfinding is also blocked and that makes it so it, no mobs can see it as an open block to walk through. Lastly, uh, we have a couple things under the entity block entity part. Now, both of these are set up the exact same way, so you don't need to worry about um, configuring it differently or anything. Uh, I will cover the slightly the different changes uh, for the furnace on, but um, in short, we need to enable this block to be a tile entity. We need to link the GUI, which we'll cover in just a second. And then we also need to enable the onbound GUI right clicked. And you want to check that box there and set your three slots for your GUI. So if you have more than one more than three slots that you've added to the GUI. This is always going to be your slot IDs plus one. So in our case, we have zero, one, and two for slot IDs. So this is going to be two plus one. So that equals three, and that means we have three slots. Now, if you customized your uh, slot IDs, this is obviously not going to be relevant, but just keep that in mind when you have three slots make sure that you put three into this box uh, maximum stack side is set to 64 though some items may not stack up fully to 64 so uh, there's already that taken in consideration with the code so you don't need to worry about that and then you can enable or disable these parts down here Energy and, fluid for, uh, energy and fluid storage I haven't used so we can just move on the on or the off block, pardon me, has a block added. This is the same procedure used for both the on and off block. It's the same procedure. And then we have a separate procedure just for the off block for the update tick. Uh, there isn't any particles uh, being shown for the off state because it's not on. So we don't have this one actually enabled. Generation hasn't been enabled either. Lastly, let's cover the differences with the on state version of the block. We have our furnace on selected. And again, you can customize the same thing as before. You want to generate your properties for your dimensions. The difference on this page is we've basically disabled the creative tab and we've set the creative pick item as the off block as well as the custom drop to be the off block as well. We're still dropping one item 
and all the other properties are the same here. Um, again, if you want to add a light luminescence to the block when it's on, you can do that as well by setting this value between um, 0 and uh, 15, which is the highest light value. Advanced properties, uh, same thing. We need to have the tick rate one. All the other properties are the same as the off block that we covered. GUI, uh, same thing, uh, all the same properties, no fluid storage or um, energy storage. And we have three procedures for this one. This is the same block procedure for when it's being added. So it's the same one that we had set up before. And then we have the update tick one. This one is a separate update tick for the um, on version of the block. This runs a different script. And then we have the on random client display tick, which is for the smoke particles. We'll cover these, the procedures in the next part um, for the block procedures. But for now, I wanna keep this a little bit simple just to show you the configuration of the elements and then we'll carry on to uh, the different parts later on. All right, so on to the GUI, we'll quickly cover that. The GUI can be found on the main folder called GUI, and then it is in the main root folder. So the other ones here are for procedures. Those are just to kind of separate the procedures a little bit for the display conditions, but we'll get to that in the third part of the video series. So we'll go ahead and we'll take a look at the GUI setup. So it's pretty straightforward. We have our three slots right here. We have slot zero, which is our output slot, slot one, which is our input slot, and slot two for our fuel slot. You might also notice that there are fuel images from basically zero to 10 for fuel. And there's also zero to 10 images for the actual, um, smelting icon, which is for the percentage when it's actually being used. Um, there's a lot of different uh, conditions that go into these parts. Uh, there is no real difference for the uh, input slot. There is a, for the output slot, we have disabled the item stack placement. So people can't put items into the output slot. This just makes sure that it works more similar to a furnace. And the other slots are basically just the same as the regular default settings. We haven't disabled anything. They can be, the items can be dropped and all. So those are the same properties. So that's the input slot and this is the, out, or the fuel slot as well. Uh, for the items, uh, we've basically specified a image display condition for each one of these. So there are tons of different conditions that we had to set up for fuel and uh, the slot. The only difference is the version, but again, we'll be covering those in a future video. So to recap, um, that's basically all the parts. We've covered the GUI configuration. There's no advanced procedures or anything for the GUI. Everything is taken care of through the procedures for the block themselves. The only condition, procedure conditions for here are literally the display conditions for the items uh, or the images that we see on the screen for those. I've basically just overlaid them. So if we move this uh, particular one, you can see that it's just overlaying the, the texture over the same texture before and it will alternate between a certain range of the percent of the value that we're using for the procedures for the block. Other than that, uh, the next part will cover the block procedures, how to build them, and we'll go into more in depth of um, the particle procedures block being added, and I'll cover more in depth, but that's gonna have to require a little bit more time and we're already getting pretty long in this video. So I will link to the video at the end screen so you guys can click on to that. And there will be a card around now where you can basically go ahead and go to that next part. Outside of that, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.